Welcome back to Kelty Arts. And I want to apologize for taking so long to release a new video for the Quick Tip series. Now that I'm back, I want to show you a technique where I use the mesh tool and poly disc to create a hexagonal tube. So the nice thing about this approach is it's kind of somewhat procedural and you can tweak stuff as well. So it's mainly using mesh to distribute the, the hexagons and using a bend tool to wrap it around or turn it into cylindrical shape. You can see it right here. And then if I select original mesh, so I used the disc, the poly disc. I can go back and change the subdivisions on the fly, which is not bad. And I can even go in and Go into the mesh settings and then go to the replicator node and change the amount of replicants. See how easy that is. Okay, so I'm just gonna start a new file and show you how to create from scratch. So first you want to go to the poly modeling. Yours probably looks different than mine, but most of them should have, most of you guys should have the, the basic primitives all set up here. If you can't find it here, you can go to modeling and then go to create polygon primitives and go to disk. So now you have a disk created. Go into the attributes. You want to change it to quad subdivision so mode and change the size to six. And then you can turn down the subdivision count. Once you have your first disk created, you want to go to the mesh tab. This one is, or you can access it through effects. And then once you change the toolbar, you see the mesh, you want to bring up the mesh editor. Then you can go and create a mesh network. By default, it will create a chain distribution. So just tweak the amount of distance until it touches each other just slightly. Let's turn on wireframe so we can get more precise control. Yep, that should do it. Then, also now you kind of want to rotate so that it's facing the way, the correct way. Uh, to do that, simply just select the mesh network and go to add node and add the offset node. With the offset nodes still selected, you want to go to the rotate offset rotation and set it to 90 degrees. And now you have it rotated the right way. And then you have to go back and tweak the distance. Now you have your first row. And then how do you, to get the pattern going, you want to go back to the mesh main node and select the replicator node and 
add it. When you press add it, you don't see anything happening. That's because you have to change the amount of replicates. When you set to one, it means it just replicates the original distribution to one another row. And then with that, you want to go down to the pattern option and then offset the pattern Z. Sorry, offset pattern X. And then you want to go back to the offset position and tweak it. Should probably be negative 1.5. Now you have pretty much your pattern going already. So the next step would be just increasing the amount of replicants to the amount that you're happy with. And then once you have that, you select the mesh, repo that mesh, go back to modeling, go to deform, Nonlinear bend. Set the curvature to 180. Rotate the farmer. You notice there is a gap, but that's not a big problem. You just have to increase the curvature past the 180 point, and they'll close slowly. Close to kind of tweak it past the 180 point, you want to hold on, you want to go to the box, the float box, float field, sorry, and then hold on to control, and then left click and drag to the right until it closes in on itself. And there you have it, your Base two. And it's still still tweakable, like still live, all the settings. Like you can still increase the amount and decrease the replicate amounts. And also scale. Once you add that, you would also have to make it easier on yourself. Just turn off and find it again. Just to double check that mounts. Fix. Do it one by one. Replicator so that you can clearly see the first row and adjust slightly until it just touches each other. And then once that's done, turn the replicator back on just to double check. Perfect. So you have to adjust the handle slightly by scaling it up. So yeah, there you go. If you want to keep it all together as one single mesh, like meaning all welded, just simply, if, if you want to save a copy, just in case, just simply duplicate the mesh. 
center the pivot. Make things easier on yourself. Simply go to... Like, if you want to bevel those edges, right? So, what you want to do first... Let's go to Modeling Toolkit. And go to Border Selection. And drag select. And it'll select all the borders for you. Once you have that... Turn off the selection constraints. Create a set. Where are you? There you go. Set. Okay. You want to convert to vertices and merge all the vertices now. By default, 0 0.01 should work nicely. Actually, you don't even need the set. Set the set is kind of like a backup plan in case the edge selections don't work. So with that, it should technically, if I go to select and convert selection to contain edges, it selects the original edges, and then you can run the bevel edge. Change the speed dial to lower so that you get more finer control. Change segments to see. Let's see what happens if I go to set and select set numbers. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, yeah. So with that done. If you want to indent these shapes, you can either go, I mean, if you want to indent the gaps or so-called panel lines, you can go to bevel and then, I believe if you increase the depth, it should, hmm, seems to be not, Acting the way that I want to. Okay, no matter. Okay, since that doesn't work, it's not a big problem. So what you want to do is... It's somewhat of a manual work, but... It, actually, no, you can do it quicker. Uh, check how many neighbors. One, two, three, four, five, six. So go to select constraints use constraints bring up the window go to geometry neighbors minimum six one two three four five six and then go to activate and then all index and then you'll select all the midpoints of each hex tile once you have that Go to click nothing, deactivate, and just reset everything. With the middle vertices selected, go to select, convert selection to, to faces. Now you can either extrude them. this or you can do an invert selection select the sec go back to select inversion and then extrude
Pretty handy, right? You can even just use this and create a hex wire. So to create the hex wire, you just simply go back to the face selection before by undoing and just hit delete. Now you have the hex wire. If you want to increase the thickness, you simply just go to go back to the poly bevel and then increase the fraction. It's pretty nice, right? It's still editable. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you learned something.